Yogurt only have a point to show from three outings in Division 1 so far, that being a 4-4 draw at Solihull last week. Their main threat comes from Fred Bellini and Ryan Campbell with the ever-dependable Terry Curtin back on defence. Bobby Brown makes his debut for the Flames. For the wins over the Lee Valley Lions and Swindon Wildcats means it's so far so good. Andre Marlowe's team comes into the game after a disappointing end to their B&H campaign, defeated 5-1 by Edinburgh. The referee is Jeff Danswell, Solihull in predominantly red, Guildford in white with red shorts. Fairly good crowd at the Spectrum for a Sunday night, hoping their side can turn around their recent fortunes in the league. Solihull with the first main attack of the evening, the plants straight into the path of Paul Windridge, and that silenced the crowd who were quite noisy before that. The plant always a dangerous man hovering around the front of net. Getting the puck into the range of Chris Norton, who just helps it on its way to Richard Laplante. And then to fire the bullets is Paul Wondridge for the opening goal for the Teesside Bombers. Guilford then rocked back on the heels early on in this game, a minute and nine that first goal for Guilford. First save of the night has had to be made by Ian Young, the netminder between the pipes for the Teesside Bombers. Here's Bidner, been around quite a few different places and finds himself now with the Teesside Bombers, goes in for a challenge on Rob Priestman, who goes into the boards as well. Set up for Davison. Back out again to Laplante, always a dangerous man. And still a man is very hard to keep quiet, Marlow. Still Marlow back on the point, hoping that somebody's going to move into the centre. Paul Windridge is the man who's there for his second goal of the night, it very nearly came, Norton just firing the puck across the face of net. That's Marlowe who's going to do the clearing up operation for the Teesside Bombers back on defence. Danny O'Hanlon keeping him closed company just to get the chance of an interception. Not this time, it's Bidner, O'Hanlon. Plant will set the move up from behind his own net with some company from Norton. Here's the plant. He to do a lot of work by himself as he pulled down by Drew Chapman. No calling to the referee, and Chapman will just whack the puck away as far as he can. Didn't get the range he was looking for on that occasion. Save made by John Nocter, preferred to Dean Russell's Samways in this game. Long-range effort, which uh, was certainly destined for the net. And the second attempt, John Nocter, make sure his side's not in trouble. Taking a while for both sides to get into the face of this game. Teesside after a, a difficult game against Edinburgh the previous evening. To come down to first division level this evening, rather upping their game, and that finds the target from Richard Laplante. We marked your card about him earlier on. It doesn't take too much to get him on the score sheet. He's already got an assist in the game. And less than six minutes gone in the first period, he finds the target. And this time, John Nocter can do nothing about it. Lazy, deceptive type of uh, shot on there. And it finds the right-hand corner. Face-off for Teesside, who are winning most of the face-offs at the moment, which is why Guildford are finally hard to get into this first period. Davison. And Teesside again with Andre Marlow, the player coach of the Bombers. Just wheeling round is Paul Davison. Hanlon looking for the puck. That's a chance for Pellini, tries to get through to a Hanlon. Bellini is now peeled off to in front of Neb. They can keep the puck in play just over the blue line. They've got a the chance of making something happen here. Freeton, there's Bellini. Bounces back off the boards. The wily old fox Andre Marlowe keeping Bellini quiet. He can't turn around and get the puck in the direction that Neb is looking for. Marlowe. Through to Bidner. Good opportunity opening up. Good save made too by Nocta going forward. Didn't get an awful lot of protection from his defence this time. Challenge in attendance, but belatedly, there was just a possibility of a red shirt coming in to pick up on the loose spoils. The plant is Norton, former Durham Wasp player. Good take by Nocter. 
heading for the top left-hand corner of the net. Grabbed it into his chest, well, top any ricochet. Norton with a pretty good shot for a defenseman, as most of the Canadians have. Marlow, no way through this time. Another go, though, from just inside the blue line. Feeds it into the slot for a chance on the backhand. It's Paul Davidson who hasn't given up on this one yet. That's now three back towards his own goal because Chalice has cleared for the Guildford Flames. There's Bidner. That's the blue line. Chalice will find Davidson just a step behind him as he clears it around the board. Thompson, O'Hanlon. Now Freeston head down. Can he find a way through? He might be able to for the opening goal. Great save made by Ian Young. And Polini thwarted on that attempt. Well, you probably would have put your money on Fred Polini putting it away from there. Close enough. But Ian Young just read it correctly. And the luck would have procured uh, his bounce, perhaps. Long range effort from Thompson. Another go again. I'm trying to set somebody up, but he can't because. Davidson has it. Intercepted again by Thompson. O'Hanlon waiting for it down the right wing. Chalice will feed it through to him. And Thompson just to have to unload it because there's nobody close enough to give it to. And Bidner with Chalice. Bidner will scythe his way through. Thought about the shot initially, I think, but just still wheeled around from Thompson. Shot then forced in on range of net and there's Nocta just protecting his goal. Here's O'Hanlon skating forward. And waiting for it out in front of that. Almost had the opportunity to turn and shoot. Polini nearly put it on his stick. O'Hanlon's going to battle back for it in the corner. Polini still battling for it and still, oh, got a bit of a forearm jab there. That was Andre Marlow, but the uh, referee's standing right close by. And decides not to call anything this time. Again, Gilford has to dig from deep and Paul Davidson and that doesn't look very good from a bomber's point of view. Ice hockey players, unlike some football players, do not feign injury. And Davidson is in a fair amount of pain there. That's going to take more than the magic sponge and a bit of spray. See if we can like hear about exactly what happened from that. Yeah, just got to check. Got a bit of a stick as well as he went down to the ice. And that's a sad sight to see at any rate. Paul Davidson is unlikely to play any further part in this game, being helped off by Stephen Johnson. So a fairly key player in terms of the T side overall shape and team of things for this game disappears. And I have to say that's going to be something that's going to be a bit more long term than just this game. Plant in the face off circle against Ryan Campbell. A quiet night so far for him. As if uh, the Guildford Flames in total. Here's Laplante. Danger man again. Thwarted by John Nocter. Must wonder why the French Canadians being given so much space and so much time. Nobody seems to be closing him down. And he's at will. Laplante trying to win it back off Campbell. Curtain back. The player coach of the Guildford Flames. Just brings it out from his own net. Norton, it's Laplante. Very formidable combination those two when they get going. Clearance uh, made long range from Norton. Again, a fair amount of speed. Not quite the accuracy this time from Norton. Ryan Campbell. A lot of work to do all by himself. Weaves in and out. Still Campbell with the puck. Took uh, one, two, three red shirts around him just to uh, halt his progress. Curtain back. Finds Drew Chapman. Here's Nicky Andoli, whose birthday it is today. would love to cap that with a goal, I'm sure. Chris Norton, Ryan Campbell. They've got it away yet, the Bombers. Oh. Ian Richardson just uh, holding his man up behind the back of the net. <laughs> a rare old tussle going on there. The Bombers do not want to give up and relinquish this lead. Ian Doley. Off the glove it goes of Richard Laplante and away come the Bombers again and they've got a bit of a break on here. Here's Al Latre. Shot from Laplante. Got the ricochet off curtain back, right where he should be. Now Ian Doley. Still Ian Doley. Crowd thinks something should be called there. I think Ian Doley probably did as well. Might get an idea from this whether anything was 
as he needed. No, just lost the momentum and lost his footing. And crashing down to the ice. Well, Guilford has yet not really getting into it. Here's their uh, debutant, Bobby Brown. Just getting down right wing. Got Polini for company. Let's run go. Shea's quite hard back off the plexi. And Bombers will be able to clear down right wing. Chapman waiting for the pass. It doesn't go to him, but it will go to Polini. Polini is robbed by Norton. Norton gives it to Bidnap. Skating through with dangerous Latre. for just controlling the pace and tempo of this game. Hosai still not really into it. They had a tough game up in Bradford the previous evening against Trafford. I think it's starting to show in those tired legs. Now Curtin back is pulled down to the ice by Richard Laplante. I think he's going to go for that, but he won't uh, go until the beginning of the second period because that's the end of 20 minutes ice hockey at Guildford. And it's Guildford Flames nil, Teesside Bombers 2. Guildford nil, Teesside 2 at the start of the second period in terms of men on the ice. It's Guildford 4, Teesside 4. A player from each side dispatched to the penalty box. Andre Marlow for the Teesside Bombers. It went earlier on and now taking his place, Richard Laplante for the Bombers. And for Guildford, it's Terry Curtin back. So four on four now, which means there's uh, much more wide open ice for them to manoeuvre in means that uh, forwards who like to go forward with a bit of pace can exploit the opportunity and Guildford we're hoping they can do it early on so they can uh, get back into this game Not shown too much signs in the first 20 minutes of giving the Bombers much to get concerned about perhaps this man will Ryan Campbell there's Thompson Thompson loses it and that's Latre going forward one of the imports for the Teesside Bombers very dangerous customer starting to establish himself already in this country that's big Mark Pallister cousin of Gary also known for uh, footballing fans from Manchester United Norton long range effort which took a uh, deflection there's some of the people cowering behind the back of the plexiglass not surprisingly really we can go anywhere when it gets a deflection Friesen O'Hanlon they don't want to be back there on the 4 on 4 they want to be moving forward now that's a chance for them to move forward, and a chance for Pallister to intervene. The fans trying to raise the noise level a little bit. A good effort from Danny O'Hanlon from that range, just causing a few problems for Ian Young. Here's Friesen. O'Hanlon's there again. So is Thompson. That's what the home crowd wanted. More importantly, that's what the Guildford Flames wanted. With a minute and 33 gone. In the second period, at last the Flames are on the board. The assist will go to Danny O'Hanlon and to Rob Friesen. The goal undoubtedly will go to Paul Thompson. Much of a gap to find a way through there, but he found it all right. And Ian Young exposed for the first time. 2 1 then, game on. Now perhaps Guildford can show us what they're made of at home. We expected to pick up most of the points at the Spectrum because it's a, a good sized rink, certainly a bit bigger than the Bombers are used to playing on week in, week out. And that extra 4x4 four four metres normally gives teams like Guildford a bit of an advantage. They're not showing it at this stage yet. Dumped into the corner by Danny O'Hanlon. So covered a lot of ice this evening already in this game. This is a man down to the ice, that's Andre Marlow. Just pick himself up and set it up again. Crowd now totally into this game. And that their next goal could really start to set the seal on the way this game's going to go. If it goes to the Flames, then they'll have at least a psychological advantage, if not the scoreline advantage. Now here's Bidner. Again with Pallister waiting for the pass to come to him. Marlow will feed it out to the blue line. There's Pallister. Brown just marking him all the way. Adrian Smith handed British player, which you don't see too many. Bidner, or Washington Capitals player in the NHL. Pallister, great opportunity opening up for Penny Cook, still loose. Good defensive work this time by the Flames, but it's given away, and Bidner misses out on his first goal of the night, but not by a great deal. Bobby Brown it was who gave it away. Top Bidner it was who uh, got a deflection of John Nocturus. That would have been in. 
Windridge. The plant waiting for it in the center. Battling away, and they're noted for that, the Bombers, over many years. They're a good battling team, perhaps too much so, well too literally sometimes. The tray. It's Nicky and Doley. Andrew Sparks going for the pass in the middle of the ice. Ryan Cavill. But again, here's Norton. He's uh, really stuck his imprint on this game already. Laplante. Still a chance over the ricochet back off from Nocta. Now Ian Doley going for all he's worth down the ice. It'll be uh, smothered though by Ian Young before Ian Doley gets the chance to put it home. Awful lot of promise in that young lad, which we haven't yet seen perhaps. Friesen, Polini, Thompson. He knows where the goal is. He's hit the target once already tonight. That's Pallister. Almost working out of defence. Paulie this time, and polini has got a good chance. Who can he set up this time? Friesen was the man arriving in the centre. But uh, it comes to nothing. And chases on for Paul Thompson. The power play at the moment. The Flames, you wouldn't believe it, would you? Friesen, now Polini in space, but they couldn't get the puck to him. Played in by Danny O'Hanlon. And again, big Mark Pallister will work it out of defence. Here come the Bombers with Smith. Chasing into the centre is Jim Pennycook. He's been around a few years, knows this game inside out. Gives the puck to Adrian Smith with the goal. Virtually at his mercy, had time to set his sights and plant it home. And Adrian Smith, one of the alternate captains on the Teesside Bombers team, works his way into position very well. Knew where that was going to come. It's like a training drill almost. And finds the back of the net. And Guildford find themselves 3 1 down with that shot from Smith. After just having a power play opportunity as well. Rethinking to be done on the Guildford bench, but the Teesside Bombers will be rather happy at that scoreline. 3 1. Had their problems this weekend. Their bus. No brakes, and apparently they're not going to be leaving this rink until about midnight tonight when the uh, replacement bus arrives. So it's a long night for them, and they'll be hoping to have uh, something to celebrate on the way back up to the northeast. A bit premature to start thinking about that just yet. Norton in the corner. Ian Doley will uh, follow him in there, didn't take him all the way. Laplante. That's Ian Richardson. Norton. Such a smooth skater and so effortless too. Curtain back, just whips it away. Richardson, stay up there hoping he can help out. Got screamed across the face hoping that somebody would be there. Norton hasn't given up on it yet, nor of the Bombers. will come back, Richardson just again hovering back. It'll come back to him almost on the blue line, but he decides to take it back into his own end of the ice. Just relieving a bit of the pressure. Norton with Laplante starting his move up the ice. Norton just getting himself a little bit tied up, but Laplante will rescue him. Comes the French Canadian down left wing. Good for a few goals in most games, Laplante. Here he is again in front of the net. Inch perfect. As cool, calm, and calculated as you'd like to see from an import. That's precisely why Andre Marlowe's got him. Player playing in the first division who really ought to be playing at the higher standard, but he'll shine in this league, that's for certain. Richard Laplante gets round one, gets round two, and gets past the goalie for the fourth goal for the T side bombers. It's a lovely finish. And uh, despite John Nocter's sprawling efforts, nothing he can do to prevent another goal for the away side. Eight minutes into the second period. It's all bombers at the moment. The other side actually wondering what's happened to uh, their side. They've gone a little bit off the boil, to say the least. It just isn't quite the uh, amount of intensity from the Guildford Flames in this game that the home side are hoping for. And they've gone a little bit quiet. The uh, very small contingent who made their way down from Billingham have been making as much noise as the home side, really. Polini. Oh, that could have gone anywhere. That could have been anybody's for the taking. Paul Thompson was the closest man in a white shirt to doing anything about it, but uh, couldn't this time. He's a dangerous customer as always. Andre Marlowe, Todd Bidner, 
Tries to serve Adrian Smith, and it's in. Well, quite how he got there. I think only the replay could possibly tell us, but it sneaked under the body of John Nocter. And again, the crowd is silenced. Marlow into the slot. Bittner helps it on his way. Smith, yeah, a little dribble really under the body of John Nocter. He'll be annoyed about that. He thought he had his options covered, and he pretty well did, but he went through the legs. And, well, it's turning out to be very one-sided now. Smith with his second of the evening. And the Bombers have opened up a chasm. It's 5-1. Yeah. Uh, Guilford have certainly got enough firepower to bring themselves back into this game, but they're not having the puck or the chances at the right end. Bittner! Screams back, it could be Penny Cooks. Not this time. But, uh, there seems to be a bit more of fight and heart in the men in red. Not quite so much from the players in white. Marlowe. <laughs> Bidner. <laughs> Your goalkeeping practice for John Nocter just falling down in the crease. Well, they make you it all. The glum-looking faces will tell you everything you need to know about the way Guilford are playing in this game. There's a little bit of work to be done on this team before it's honed to perfection. Oh, the oh. Well, just as you say that, Terry Curtinback lets one go from long range. And it looks at the moment that's the only way that Guilford are going to score, not uh, playing the nice, neat, fancy, dipsy-doodle stuff in front of net. But having it go from long range, and Terry Curtinback said, well, why not? Here goes. And there goes. And Ian Young totally bemused and called out by that. He wasn't expecting that at all, but he was going the other way. <laughs> and, uh, well, that was a bit posthumous, that dive. 5-2 to the Teesside Bombers over the Guildford Flames. Well, that really does reflect the way this game has gone. It's uh, no fluke at all. A good value for that lead. Could have had more. The plant. Impressive import he's turned out to be for uh, sides he's played for. And now for Teesside as well. Well, that's class. That really is class. Effortless. And no great uh, jubilation or uh, histrionics afterwards. Just, well, there you go. It's all in a day's work, really, isn't it? Lovely finish. Just over a minute to go before the end of the period. And there's Richard Laplante. Thank you very much for his third of the evening 6-2 now is there any way back for the girl for the flames there hasn't been much sign that they're going to pull themselves around in this game in recent times but uh, well ice hockey is that sort of game where things can change complexion very quickly now Bellini chance for Friesen Friesen again Friesen the third time and he finds the target this time that was perseverance if you like he wasn't going to be thwarted was he it didn't happen for him the first time. Second time, third time, have another go. One, two, where is it now? There it is. <laughs> and uh, Ian Young stood no chance. He was completely poleaxed by that one. Into the last minute of the second period. In fact, time has run out for both the Flames and the Bombers to inflict any further damage on the scoreboard against each other. 6-3 to the Bombers after 40 minutes. And despite the fact that uh, Guildford really aren't at their best, nor a Teesside really, they're probably a step behind what they'd like to be at this stage. It's a very tight second period, 4-3 it was, but still means that the Bombers won that period and have extended their lead to three. And early goals and necessity now for the home side to pull themselves back into it. Here's Al Latre. Latre still having a go, and uh, Campbell's having a go at him, trying to stop him en route to goal. Here's Norton been instrumental in just about everything they've done in this game and maybe again Norton trying to find his man back to the blue line it'll come for Laplante to set the play up again Norton's involved in a bit of a wrestling match with Curtin back Curtin back will uh, win out on this occasion well, not later on in the game we'll have to wait and see Curtin back managed to get the pass away but uh, not directed where he wants it and Laplante will wait until the players in red have come back over the blue line Pushing and shoving going on the far side, and the plant, the tray. Uh, speed in that, if not quite the accuracy he was hoping for. Pallister. Go into the corner and become Guilford. Penned back in their own end again, but perhaps they can do something about it now. Ian Doley. 
along the ice. He don't have that covered pretty well. Campbell. Campbell will battle for it. So too will Bill Rawls is in there as well. That's Nicky Andoli has lost out to Bidner. Bidner's got a lot of skating to do, a lot of work to do, and he's got Marlow arriving for the drop pass. Marlow. Again, it's Penny Cook arriving just in front of net. Bidner, Penny Cook. fired in, Bidner will chase into the corner, Penny Cook, good chance for him, got an unkind bounce or else he would have turned around and shot that in the direction of the Guildford Flames goal and John Nocter is such a second a lot of pressure, Bidner, Penny Cook, like a two-man show at the moment with those two, but Ryan Campbell will put an end to that, and force it down the ice, now Polini holds it up well, nice pass but Bobby Brown just can't control it, and play is overturned again. Curtain back. Intercepted though by Smith. This is Bidner. Bidner's shot. Well saved by Nocter. It's landed on the roof for the net. Referee now spots that it has. It's a good stop. Bidner from close range is difficult to stop and Nocter, uh, well, <laughs> try to take a bit of evasive action at the same time it made the stop. It's Friesen arriving in front of the net. Thompson now will have to backtrack as he sees Bidner bearing down on him. Uh, takes a bit of the pace off that shot as it was heading toward net. Thompson and Bidner, along with John Aisbit. Drew Chapman will clear, but not far enough from a Guildford point of view. And is set up again. Good chance for Aisbit, who puts it away. Four minutes and eight seconds into the third period. And that gap is opening. It's yawning still wider. And the home fans again stunned into silence. It's one of the uh, lesser known bombers. Puts his name on the score sheet. John Aisbit. John Nocter beat. Well, mm -hmm. soul searching going on on the uh, Guildford bench. A lot of uh, congratulations and high fives from the Teesside bombers. Now Bidner. Still Bidner. Sort of turning to be provider rather than scorer. Smith, he's been nearly in for his second there. Clearance by Rawls, no he hasn't done it. Smith's waiting in behind Marlow. That's Marlow again. Could go anywhere. And uh, Ian Dolly will try and clear his lines. He's going to clear the zone. So the greatest of passes, but he'll try and pick up on the return. Here he is. Hasn't uh, yet registered his name on the board. Will be looking to do so on his birthday. Marlow. One back by Ryan Campbell. Now, what can Campbell do? He's doing a lot so far. Still got the puck. Campbell, that would have been a, a lovely move if somebody could have picked up on the pass, but they couldn't. And again, wasted effort from the Guildford Flames. Sort of distance that John Nocter would have wanted there because he's put himself back into trouble. A tray. Ooh, nearly had an open net in which to score. Still might. In early turning defenseman. The puck is played down the ice. Chase on for Bill Rawls. Try and hold it in as long as he can. Marlow will try and play it back in the other direction. Curtin backs the uh, last man on the blue line to keep it in and can't. Here comes Latre. Latre back to Pallister. And there was Stephen Johnson on the follow up. Back off the body of the Guildford keeper. Set up by. Mark Pallister, there was Johnson. Thank you, says John Nocter. Could do with a breather after that. Constant pressure on that Guilford Flames net. And Paul Thompson will try and ease the congestion down that end if he possibly can. Now, what can they make of it this time? That's Bobby Brown. Brown looking for Friesen. Oh, Brown taken down by Chris Norton with some force. Laplante. Norton. Control by Norton, lovely shot by Norton, great range. And uh, well, once again, John Nocter having to do a scrambling in front of net, but he stops Norton on this occasion. It's Richard Laplante getting another one of those fiery shots in on net. And uh, oh, just very grateful, thankful it didn't get to where he oh, wanted it to be. No, no. John the Bombers again. Seen that quite a few times in this game. It's not battling for it, but uh, Flames have a bit of possession for a while. Oh, that's a good battle. 
<laughs> Pallister and Friesen. I think I know I put my money on in that one, but uh, it's all broken up with no consequences. Norton. The tray. It's Paul Windridge getting into the centre of the play. Back on halfway. Laplante. Norton in behind. Windridge is there as well. Laplante has lost out. Very rare that happened in this game, but it has on this occasion. Now Polini's up there. Curtain backs looking for the shot. And Ian Doley just not quite where he needed to be at the right time on that occasion. Just skating across and the puck just eluding his stick. Is Al Latre. He knows where he wants to go and he knows where he wants to put the puck as well. And he puts it there. 10 minutes and 50 seconds into the period. Don't be fooled by the name on the back of the shirt. That is Al Latre and not Chris Perry. This is how he did it. All by himself. Take that. And he did. And uh, John Nocter was making the move after the puck had passed him in the net chosen over Dean Russell Samways in this game he has made some good stops but this wasn't one of them well I think it's all over by the shouting there's not been an awful lot of that from the home side 8-3 now to the Bombers and uh, we're back to the drawing board after tonight Bill Rawls back behind the back of the net is Andre Marlowe Bidner going to try his luck at long range and uh, Nocta did well there because uh, he's been tested out from all sorts of angles and all sorts of distances Smith tries to get it back to Bidner as he moves into space Hayes bits there as well Bobby Brown will clear down the ice Bill Rawls was there Brown just whacks it around the back of the goal so nobody in particular Bidner will loft it forward See how uh, Guilford deal with this this time. Thompson. Friesen. Good stop made by Ian Young. Now without the helmet is Ian Richardson. So chance to have a look and see how close that came. Friesen did well and Ian Young did even better. Norton. Swing back off the play. Trey into the path of Pallister. But going to make anything of it this time as Thompson will turn the play around bring it in the other direction O'Hanlon to his right and looking for the pass now Campbell Campbell from that range oh that looked like it was destined for the back of the net but uh, it didn't quite make it this time I suppose when the luck's not running with you that's the type of thing that happens Windridge chase on down the ice Nocta decides just to hold it in place Thompson to bring away Campbell not this time Bidner Richard Laplante Norton Norton again and it's found its way through and referee acknowledges that fact Chris Norton takes the congratulations and the accolades of his teammates who are finding this all a bit of a breeze all a bit of a stroll tonight Chris Norton's there for the rich pickings. That's what he does. On the backhand. Norton still battling his way through. Curtain back, Sparks and Campbell. Neither of them could stop him. And there it was. Just where Norton wanted it to be. And exactly where John Nocter did want it to be. 9-3. It's an embarrassing scoreline for the home side. We would have hoped to have done an awful lot better than this. It's been the worst performance of the season so far. And uh, of course more galling when you do it in front of your home fans. On the road you can sort of become a bit anonymous and invisible. But when it happens in front of uh, your loyal, faithful, paying public, that's when you've got a few questions to answer. And the plant. Outstanding in this game tonight. Andre Marlowe. Taking shots from every angle, from uh, every distance on John Norton. He's uh, fielding them pretty well. He's got a couple of sloppy ones in, but he's made some good stops in this game. It's uh, young Kevin Parrish just having a shift. Ryan Campbell. Here's Parrish again. And the shot from Danny O'Hanlon. Well, it had to come eventually. Well done, Kevin Parrish. Sheer tenacity from him. And Danny O'Hanlon is set up for his first. Who knows how many more that might come in the remaining moments. 
minute and a half to go, so I think that's going to be his last opportunity. But you never know in ice hockey, goals are scored very quickly, and uh, well, at long last, something for the crowd to shout about. Many of them have already uh, started to drift home, so they might have missed that, but uh, O'Hanlon will be glad he's got a goal to add to his earlier assist. And Ian Young will think, well, should have kept the legs together that time. 9 4, T side over Guildford. Save made by Nocter. Still pressure from the Bombers who like to rack up double figures before the night is over. A long night ahead of them. A long drive back to the northeast. It's going to be a very comfortable and pleasurable one after this performance. Maybe last chance for Laplante to add to his three goal tally already in this match. Here comes to Pennycook. Shot there from Richardson, which is blocked by Thompson. Still a chance for it to go in. Is it in? Is it in? Another chance for Pennycook. No, it's not. Unbelievably, that one stayed out. More by luck than judgment. But it's not a night to go for Flames, who we care to remember too much about. The Teesside Bombers, on the other hand, are very much in the box seat. Reaction on that scoreline coming up after the break. More encounter than many would have anticipated at Guildford. Bombers, despite a hazardous journey down when their coach developed brake problems, easily took the two points. So three out of three in the league for them now, and a profitable night for import Chris Norton with one plus five. Yeah, things have gone pretty well for us thus far. Uh, there's a little bit of pressure on us. Everybody in the magazines and whatnot have said that we're the favourites or we have, uh, on paper, a pretty decent club. And uh, thus far, we've played pretty well. Unfortunately, we haven't done as well in the Benson and Hedges, but I think we can look at our league start thus far and be pretty satisfied with what we've done. I think maybe they were a little flat tonight. Um, they didn't really come out, I think, the way that a lot of home teams do come out with a little little spark. They were, like I say, a touch flat. But, you know, we didn't play very well at all last night. We were embarrassed in our home rank. We, we didn't show up. Not one person played well. So I think we had a little bit of a task tonight, and we um, we took it took it out on them. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm satisfied with the effort, as, as I know Andre Malo is. And uh, any time you can come to a visiting rink, and uh, especially the size of this one compared to our rink in Billingham, uh, and play the way that we played, I think you have to be very satisfied, and uh, the guys did a good job tonight. You know, the lads are a bit disappointed right now. We, you know, we're expecting better things from from ourselves as a team right now. We've got a good team on paper, everyone says, but we're not uh, putting the results together right now. I don't know whether it's inexperience. We've got a very young team this this year, and uh, you know, there's there's definitely a lot of growing pains going with it. We, we're not gelling and playing as a team as we should be, and that's that's our biggest problem right now. We showed a few flashes tonight. We got a bit of momentum going, and we were, we were back in the game. And then we we give up a, a bad goal, and the heads would drop. You know, with a young team, the confidence goes. You know, you have highs and lows, and we've got to keep it up as high as we can. We give up a bad goal, the confidence goes down, and, and that's uh, you know, we're done for the period. You know, we've had some uh, we've had some tough battles in the league this year. We've lost uh, three league games by one goal, and you know, who knows, a goal here or there, and uh, you know, we could be up at the top end of the table rather than the bottom end of the table.